You guys know the drill, don't need to do the intro too much. We are doing a tier list for every starting left fielder in Major League Baseball. Done it for every position, again, link in the description somewhere to the playlist for the tier list of the 2023 season positions. And we got Akil Badu getting us started off first. Akil Badu is, <sighs> he's not really an everyday player. He's been playing better of late, but I truthfully believe that if you were to get the most out of Akil Badu, it would be in a backup platoon role because it just seems like lefty lefty's not really his thing. Hits right, he's a little bit better. He just doesn't feel like a guy that you would be comfortable with every single day for you out in the outfield. Off the bench, great. A good little bat to go up against some righties or just get him out of the game against lefties, honestly, truthfully. Oh, Andrew Benintendi. I mean, I'll just put him in average. He obviously is a good fielder, but at the plate, I can't believe, I can't believe that the biggest free agent deal in White Sox history went to Andrew Benintendi at five years, $75 million. What an insane overpay. It felt like an overpay at the time too. Like what were they thinking for a guy who, what, the best chances he's a little bit better than average offensively at the plate? Like there's just, there's no real upside to the Andrew Benintendi signing, putting him in left field every single day. He's a good player on a good team. But when you have a bad team like the White Sox, you just, you don't want him being one of the main bats. And that's why I put him in average. Had such high hopes for him too. He was so great with the Red Sox. Austin Hayes. I think Austin Hayes is like the definition of a solid left fielder. Pretty solid in the outfield defensively. At the plate, he's been really good this year. 15-ish home runs, hitting 280 with like an almost 800 OPS. He's a very, very solid player. A guy who I think is just right on the cusp of being an all-star. I understand he made the all-star team this year. He had a great first half. Did slow down a little bit in the second half. And of course, playing in Baltimore makes it tough to get those home run numbers up because left field is just so incredibly deep there. But I think right now, he might move. He might move, honestly. But I think right now he goes in that solid tier of just like really good every day. One of the like 10 best left fielders in baseball. Who Brian De La Cruz. Like I actually, I personally like Brian De La Cruz. I think there is a very good player somewhere inside of him, but it's just like not really shown up consistently. He had a little bit of a stretch this year where he was absolutely on fire, but because he's so horrendous in the outfield and inconsistent. I'm gonna have to put him in average. He is a barrel king. He does hit the ball hard and he absolutely kills the Mets. But outside of that, his numbers just don't really stretch out over an entire year that make you think he's anything better than an average player right now. But I still won't give up hope on him. At some point in his career, he's gonna go to a crazy smart team like the Dodgers and he's gonna pop off for like 30 home runs. I know what's gonna happen. Brian Reynolds, to me, is just a slightly, slightly better version of Austin Hayes. I think he's a very good player. He's in that all-star caliber tier for sure. Switch hitter with some power in that bat, 800 OPS, solid outfielder out in left field, much better than he is in center. Although we have seen him play well in center. His defensive metrics are all over the place, but he's a good athlete. Switch hitter is going to be in Pittsburgh for the foreseeable future, which is really cool for you Pirates fans that this is a guy who chose to be there for a long time. Love to see that. Extra base hit machine, gets on base, like all the things that you'd want to have a good player. Brian Reynolds is that. So yeah, I think all-star tier is pretty fair for him. Oh, where do I put Christian Yelich? Oh, he's so tough. He is so, so tough. I I think, man, he's right on the borderline of all-star and solid, right? I think that's definitely the the debate is going to be, is he all-star? Is he solid? He's having a really good year, but I, st I wow. I'm going to put him in all-star. I'm going to put him in all-star. I, I just remember how good he was, the power, the speed, the on-base ability, and we're seeing a little bit of this year. The power still hasn't come back to what it was before when we were seeing 2018, 2019 Christian Yelich. Getting on base again, he's stealing bases, hitting the ball hard. There's definitely a way where Christian Yelich comes out of this next year and has a monster season. He's not at that elite level for sure. I think he is just a little bit better than Austin Hayes right now. Maybe you guys can fight me in the comment section about this. I know Yelich isn't great defensively at all, but at the plate, he still is very good, and I think he's probably right on that tier of all-star solid. Oh, what to do about Dalton Varsho? Good Goodness. Oh, he's so bad this year. So, so bad. He's a pretty good outfielder. Like, he's a good athlete. He's a sick athlete. He can play the outfield. He can catch. And I think he even played shortstop at one point in the minor league. So, sick athlete. But he's been so bad with the Blue Jays. He's been all over the place. 17 homers, 15 stolen bases, 663. Oh. Dalton Varsho, I think, goes an average. I don't really care how good his defense is. When you're in left field, you need a little bit more at the bat. And an OPS plus at 82 is just not good enough. Not good enough for the defense to outweigh. And to be fair, when you think about outfielders, the premier positions right now are center field and right field, and left field, you need to see some power. You need to see something 
He's just not doing it. Another guy who I think is more of a backup platoon, although his numbers are kind of fine, is going to be David Peralta. And I think that's really how they use him. He platoons with Chris Taylor out in left field. Chris Taylor is also kind of in that backup platoon role right now, utility man. Peralta crushes right-handed pitching still. You don't want to see him against lefties. He hasn't been great this year, but again, you play him in his platoon roles. That's where you get the most value out of him. I don't think he's a bad player by any means. He's just 36 now and not the same freight train that we once knew. Eddie Rosario definitely goes in the solid tier. Just an overall, like, steady Eddie. I feel like that's what you should call him. You can pencil him in for 780 OPS every single year. 20 home runs, 70 RBIs. You know what you're getting out of Eddie Rosario. He's a very solid player. Doesn't get on base much, although this year I think he's actually walked a little bit more than he has in the past, which is big for him. Hate that he's on the Braves, but Eddie Rosario, just his entire career has done the same thing, which is be a pretty good player. I am super, super hyped up on Evan Carter, someone who I tried to get his cards for the longest time out of 2020 Bowman draft. I got him in my Dynasty Fantasy Baseball Leagues. Big Evan Carter fan and all around extremely talented player. This is someone who may never be like the best player in the league type potential, but you're going to look and be like, wow, great defensively, great on the base paths, great with the bat. He's got power, everything he does well. I'm going to be conservative again because we've only seen him play 10 games at the major league level, but I'm going to put him in the solid tier. This is a guy who, if the Rangers make the playoffs, I think could be a huge, huge reason why helping that offense, helping that team just be much better than they even were, which was pretty good already. Huge Evan Carter fan. I think with Everson Pereira, it's a little bit tough because I don't think he's as bad as his numbers are leading on right now and the Yankee situation is just so weird this year. I'm just going to throw him an average. I liked what he did in the minors. He's a good athlete. Again, he was able to get on base a little bit, showed the ability with some pop in that bat. He could steal bases. He's, he's just an all-around, I think, solid player. We just haven't seen it come together at the major league level, so we're going to drop him an average to be a little conservative and maybe even nice. To me, Ian Happ is like just a little bit... Wow, where does Ian Happ go? Is he worse than Yelich? Oh, he does the same thing every year, too. I'm going to put him in solid. I'm going to put him in solid. Again, don't don't look into where these guys are inside of the tiers, but I think he's a solid left fielder with the ability to play at an all-star level. Just overall good. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm being a little harsh with these left fielders. Ian Happ, again, pencil him in for a 780 OPS every year. Switch hitter, 20 homers, 30 doubles. Stealing some bases this year. Always gets on base. Very good eye at the plate. The fact that he has 93 walks this year actually makes me want to put him almost in all-star tier because just having a 360 on base with the power and the ability to even steal a couple bases, kind of huge. I'm going to move him up into all-star for now, but we might adjust that. Jared Kelnick, I'm I'm going to put him in solid. We saw some really encouraging things from him earlier in the season. Obviously, had some injuries, struggles here and there. But early in the season, we saw Jared Kalanick hitting the ball hard, going to that level that we once remembered of him as being a top prospect, something that us Mets fans were super, super nervous about. He's hitting the ball well, getting on base, doing all those things. Now, he has slowed down a bit, as I've mentioned. He had the injury. But I do still think he is better than all these guys in average. And just the fact that he was able to make that step forward after two pretty bad seasons with the Mariners, he worked this offseason, got better mentally, and physically. Something to keep an eye out with Jared Kelnick. He's still way too talented to not be at least solid. With the Mets, it's weird. I'm looking Jeff McNeil twice because he's now pretty much become their left fielder. I love Jeff, but he's probably in the average tier. Contact hitter. He's been playing a lot, lot better in the second half. But until we see him get back to that elite level contact hitter that he was in 2022 and years past, it's just hard to really put him anywhere above average. That being said, he has so much value to your team because he can play multiple positions. He plays them all very well. Love Jeff, friend of the channel. But right now, I'm just going to have to put him in average conservatively. I think. Yes, so uh, this guy is definitely an elite. That would be one Juan Soto. Absolutely disgusting. People like to say he fell off, he's washed. I mean, maybe those people are kind of a vocal minority, but I just want to go off on them anyway, because again, in what is probably a down year for Juan Soto, he has 32 homers, 98 RBIs. He's walked a major league best 122 times, striking out 123. Like what? 907 OPS. He's just absolutely disgusting. He's the best left fielder in baseball, and I don't even really think it's close. So Juan Soto, come home. Come to New York where you belong long in the offseason. In 2025, of course. Wow, what do we do about Kyle Schwarber? What do we do about Kyle Schwarber? This one is super bizarre because he is such a horrible, horrible outfielder. Horrendous. And like in terms of war, he's not particularly valuable because he pretty much only hits home runs. 44 home runs this year, 46 last year. I think at the absolute minimum, Kyle Schwarber goes in solid, right? Like he is just, he's a unique player. He's a bit of a unicorn. Oh, man, you know what's crazy though is I, I'm putting him in all-star. I so take him over all those guys in solid probably 
fully, like right now in the moment. I don't know what to do with Kyle Schwarber. This one's so, so confusing. He's hitting 197, but has an 820 OPS and a 345 on base. He's all-star. He's all-star for sure. I'm going to keep him there. I feel good about that. I don't care about his war. He's a player that outperforms his numbers, if that makes sense. And again, that's a Philly, and I hate the Phillies. Masataka Yoshida has struggled mightily in the second half. Mightily. Still a good player. Still going to go in the solid tier for me. I like what we've seen, but he definitely has slowed down quite a bit. Seems like the major league pitching has caught up to him a little bit, and he now needs to make an adjustment. Hasn't been great, but still overall, he's a guy who has the ability to hit for a high average, has a little bit of pop in that bat. He's a better outfielder than I think we expected. He gets on base a little bit too. I like Masataka Yoshida. It's interesting to see how this year has gone for him thus far, but I think you're going to see him bounce back even more so next year. Matt Walner. I mean, I've been really impressed with what we've seen out of him thus far through, what, like 200 at-bats this season or 200 plate appearances. 12 homers, 8 doubles, 33 RBIs with an 854 OPS and on base at 359. He's got crazy exit velos. I think I'm just going to throw him in solid as well, kind of a place where a lot of these left fielders are going to go because they're not truly complete players, but Matt Walner is looking pretty solid so far. I've been very impressed. Again, the power is super, super real, and a guy that should be a big bat for the Twins come playoff time. Big reason why they've been so, so good this year. He's also been on fire lately. Whew. What to do with Michael Brantley? Hasn't looked good. Has not looked good, but it's also been 12 games. I think I'm going to throw him in solid and just give him the benefit of the doubt that he's a professional hitter who has done it for years and years and years and years. He's probably not that same all-star outfielder that we once saw in Michael Brantley, but he will still be a very beneficial piece for the Astros going into the postseason as long as they make it. And he's clutch and he's just, he's going to slap the ball to all fields. He's a good ball player. All right, Mitch. Old Mitch. Uh, we're going to put Mitch in average. He hasn't looked great with the Giants. I thought he was going to be a better pickup, but again, he struggled with injuries constantly struggles with injuries the guy can't ever stay healthy when he does stay healthy he's fantastic but right now what we've seen from Mitch has been super super disappointing I think the Giants expected more and you do have to kind of be on the field a little bit to have an impact in the last two seasons he's basically played 100 games so as much as I like Mitch as a player I think right now I'm gonna throw him an average MJ Melendez uh right now I think he goes in back a platoon I just He's just not really doing anything that makes me excited. He's only 25 years old, so there's for sure a future with MJ Melendez. I'm not giving up any hope on him just yet. Hits the ball hard, has done some impressive things, but overall, as a whole, for this season, what we see at the major league level has been relatively unimpressive. And again, like, don't let him face a lefty. Nolan Jones, super impressive with what he's been able to do, throwing him in solid. Again, I'm going to kind of take a step back. He's in Coors, got big exit velos. It's a great place for him to play. He's a guy who maybe could sneak into some all-star appearances at some point in his career if he keeps hitting like this while he's playing in Colorado. But until then, I am going to keep him in solid. Again, it's the first season that we've actually seen him get a chance, and he's performed well thus far. He's a really good left fielder. I think what you're learning is there's a bunch of guys who are good, solid hitting left fielders. There's some guys that are better, some guys that are worse, and there's Juan Soto. And there's also Randy Arozarena. Randy is so sick. I don't think him and Juan Soto are on the same tier, which makes me, okay, hold on. We're going to, we're going to do some readjusting here. We're going to put Schwarber here. We're going to put Randy Arozarena here. And I'm only putting him at the front because he is the second best left fielder in the game behind Juan Soto. And some of you guys got mad at me in the last video because I put Corey Seager, Francisco Lindor, and Bobby Witt all in the same tier in elite. You're like, they're not like Corey Seager, but obviously like it, it depends on the position. Like sometimes they're going to be multiple guys. The span of elite can be kind of bigger. Give you guys the benefit of the doubt here. I'm going to put Randy at the top of All-Star because he is not Juan Soto. He's not close to Juan Soto. Nobody at left field is close to Juan Soto, but he is the clear second best left fielder in Major League Baseball. So I'm going to put him at the top there. Otherwise, most of the time, it really doesn't matter where they go. But yeah, Randy Rosarand, that MF name, Randy, giving us giving us the smirk. He's going to have a huge postseason for the Rays. He's disgusting. He's sick. I guess he just can't be elite because Juan Soto exists. Steven Kwan is solid. He's like basically if Jeff McNeil was having a good year, that's probably where Jeff would go if he was playing left field. Steven Kwan, good at defensive outfielder out in left field, gets on base, smacks the ball around the field. He's got absolutely no power, but Steven Kwan continues to be pretty solid. I think like that's exactly how I describe him. He's solid. Stone Garrett was actually having a really nice year with the Nationals before he suffered that huge injury. And I'm not going to lie. I actually really like Stone Garrett's game. He got the ability to get on base. He showed a little pop in that bat. He was a good athlete out in the outfield. I'm throwing him in solid. Maybe solid is more so average now in left field, but Stone Garrett, good ball player. And you know what? I know Taylor Ward had a bad year, but I'm throwing him in solid too. This is just the solid video. Left field 
weirdly deep, but I guess that's what happens when you kind of just throw guys you can hit without a position. You go, oh, you go play left field and they end up being pretty good. Taylor Ward is not one of those guys. He definitely had a down year this season as from last year, but overall an extremely well-rounded player and someone I think Angels fans should continue to be excited about. Hopefully he comes back soon from that like face fracture. Boy, do I love Tommy Pham. You know where Tommy Pham's going? He's going in solid because everybody in left field is a solid left fielder. Tommy Pham, gets on base, hits the ball hard, plays a good left field. He was on the Mets this year. He was great. He's been great for the Diamondbacks thus far, too. He just, year after year after year, continues to be, you guys can say it with me, a solid player. The left fielders, just loaded position with solid players. Tony Kemp is not one of them, though. Tony Kemp is going to go in the back of platoon. He's just on the A's. That's kind of the, been the theme with these videos when we talk about A's players. You go, oh, you're on the A's. That's why you're playing Tony Kemp, one of those. He'd be a great guy to have on your bench. Don't want him playing every day. Tyler O'Neill, man, I was so high on you after 2021. You were great. You've had some injuries the last few years. Kind of derailed you a little bit. I'm going to put you in average, but I don't feel good about it. I don't feel good about it, but I don't know, man. I feel like Cardinals fans are even done with him at this point. Ali Marmol didn't want him there. I don't know what his deal is, but he's probably just not that 2021 player we saw. Then, well, Will Benson. You know where Will's going? I mean, it's the left fielder video. You guys know where. He's going in solid. Oh, it drives me nuts that it's making it two layers. That makes it a second row. But it's fine. I'm not going to freak out. Will Benson, solid player. He's been putting up really good numbers in Cincinnati. Again, for a guy who weirdly is a monster, six foot five, 230. Doesn't put up crazy hard exit velos, but that works with Cincinnati because it's an absolute band box, especially to right field. Will Benson, a lefty, able to pull the ball. 850 OPS this year. He's getting on base at a 360 clip. Extra base hit machine. 10 homers, 15 doubles, 6 triples, 27 RBIs, and 15 stolen bases in 97 games. I mean, Will Benson nice little career boost here a little breakout season for will show him some respect and keep him in that solid tier so yeah one elite left fielder i think that makes sense this is a weird tier list i want to know what you guys are thinking about it down in the comment section below where do you agree where do you disagree what do you hate about it drop it in the comments drop a like on the video as well if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the content coming at you follow me on all my social media at giraffe mark links are in description that's where i'm wrapping up today's video guys you know the drill from here on out youtube recommends you watch this video this is the last tier list i did which was short stops if you haven't seen it, go click it, check it out. I promise it's a banger. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you all tomorrow for another video. Bye.